Hello guys, this is the part 3 of database architecture. So in this video, we are going to cover rest of database architecture. So without wasting your time, let's move on the screen and start the discussion. Okay, let's first of all, we are going to discuss what is the database buffer cache. The database buffer cache is the part of the SGA and it is hold the copies of data blocks that are read from the data files. It is shared by all the concurrent users uh, in the buffer cache can be in one of the following four states. Pin, clean, free or unused and last one is a dirty. Okay, that's why we call it dirty buffer. Next is Redolog buffer cache. The Redolog buffer cache is the circular buffer in the SGA. It is holds the information about the changes made to the database. This information is stored in Redo entries and the Redo entries contain the information necessary to reconstruct changes that are made to the database by DML and DDL or internal operations. The Redo entries are also used for the database recovery if necessary. Next is a Java pool. The Java pool is used to store the data in the memory for all the session, specific Java code and data within the JVM, Java Virtual Machine. Can be configured as a separate memory area in the SGA. It is sized by the Java underscore pool underscore size. This is the parameter which, which is defined the size of the Java pool. Next is a large pool. The large pool is an optional area that provides large memory allocation for certain large process such as Oracle backup, recovery operations and input output server processes. Next is a stream pool. The stream pool is a stored buffer queue messages. It is also provide memory for Oracle stream processes. Okay, now let's discuss about the background processes. Actually, background process is two types. One is a required background processes and other one is a optional background processes. Okay, so let's see which is the required background processes. You can see the Asmon, Pmon, Database Writer, Checkpoint, Log Writer and Recover. These all are the required background processes for the Oracle database. And let's see the optional background processes. Actually in optional case there are a lot of background processes which is running but here I'm just giving the example like Archive, ASMB, RBL and others. There are a lot of background background processes which is running in the Oracle database. Let's discuss one by one. First of all the SMON. SMON stands for the system monitor processes. It is perform recovery at the instance startup if necessary. The SMON is also responsible for cleaning up temporary segments that are no longer in use. Next is a PMON. Process monitor processes. It is perform process recovery when a user process fail. Pmon also responsible for cleaning up the database buffer cache and freeing resources that our user process was using. Next is a database writer processes DBWR. The database buffer process writes the contents of buffer to data files. The database writer process are responsible for writing the modified and dirty buffers in the database buffer cache to disk. Next background process is a checkpoint. The checkpoint process records the checkpoint information in the control file and each data file header. Like this is the checkpoint and the, it is just updating the checkpoint information in the control file and as well as in the data file header. Next is a log writer. The log writer is responsible for read log buffer management by writing the read log buffer entries to the read log files on disk. Writes when a user process commit the transactions. The readlog buffer is one third full and every three seconds it, it is right in the readlog files on the disk. Okay, like uh, this is the readlog buffer cache and the log writer just pick the record from the readlog buffer cache and write that record into the readlog files which is available on the disk. Next background process is reco recover process. The recover process is a background process that is used with the distributed database configuration that automatically resolve failure involving distributed transactions. Next is the optional background process which is the everyone should know about this one. This is the archive process. If the archiver process copy 
copy read log files to a designated storage after a log switch has occurred the archiver process are present only when the database is in archive log mode and automatic archiving is enabled the archiver process can collect transactions redo data and transmit that data to standby destination so this is the archiver process that's it in this video in the next video i will explain you how our sql statements is flow in this entire architecture i hope you really learn something from this video if yes please share your feeling in comment box thanks for watching see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye